Welcome back, Regent students. This is the uh, seventh lesson in our WAVES unit. It's a lesson on what's called diffraction. And there's a video associated with this that I have um, included uh, in, in our classroom assignment stream uh, in Google Classroom. And you can watch this video before or after. I think it's better after, so you could see diffraction happening in with water waves. A real nice uh, uh, little demonstration that is, uh, uh, an instructor did. Uh, so that's a good thing to see. So what is diffraction? It's the bending of a wave as it passes past a barrier or through an opening. All waves diffract, okay? They all bend in the right conditions, light, sound, water, as you'll see in the video. But the amount of bending depends on the circumstances, the situation. So what I have here is a diagram. Uh, if we were at school, uh, we would, I would do this. I would go out into the hall, I would be person A, and I'd come out of the classroom and go, you know, toward the bus entrance of the school. And everyone would be seated here, so there'd be a wall between us. One person could stand here. And what I could do at that moment is I could talk and creative, you know, say something with my voice. So I'm creating sound waves. And also I'm creating light waves because the hallways have lights on. And the lights are hitting my shirt and bouncing off. So off of me is sound and light coming through the doorway. And let's suppose person A, that's me. I'm wearing a red shirt and I'm talking, so I'm making sound and I'm making light, okay? Person B, over here, they see and they hear me. So they could look and look out the door and I'm standing here around the corner, but because of a straight line, they could see me and they could hear me talking. So they see, they get both my sound and my light. Person C over here, sitting in the back of the room, they only hear me, right? If I'm talking here and you're over here, you would hear me. I could say, hey, class, I'm out in the hallway, and you would hear, okay? Even though you look and you cannot see me, so your eyes are looking toward the doorway, my light is not curving around, but my sound is curving around, okay? So person C gets the sound only. The sound was able to turn, but the light was not. Why? Is it just because sound diffracts or curves and light does not? No, light diffracts also, but for this given situation, the light does not diffract. To understand why, I have a series of diagrams here. Okay, so here's an opening. You see the really dark shaded regions are like walls. And this is an opening. There are two greater than signs. That actually is a symbol in math. When you have one, you just say the opening is greater than the wavelength. When you have two, you say the opening is much, much greater than the wavelength. So notice we're not like the wavelength's like a millimeter. So we're not talking like two millimeters. We're talking like, you know, maybe tw uh, 20 millimeters, much greater than the wavelength. And what these are, are the wave fronts. If you were in a helicopter looking down at the ocean, and you just drew a line through the top of each wave crest, that's what you would see. When the waves hit this very large opening compared to the wavelength, there's little to no bending. In other words, the beam gets cut off the waves, and what we have here, if this were light, would be a crisp shadow. So this is the light, and then over here is the shadow where the light doesn't turn around the corner. So if I had like a spotlight over here through a window, you'd see a, a, a sharp uh, pattern of the window and then the, a, a crisp shadow. So there's no bending. If, however, I decrease the opening, so it's not much, much greater than the wavelength. It's just greater, like maybe it's twice as big, you know, or something like that. Then, or another thing I could do is instead of decrease the opening, I could have increased the wavelength. What matters is the relative comparison, okay, as you'll see in the video. He does that actually. And so what happens is now with the, the opening getting smaller compared to the wavelength, but still bigger, there's some bending. 
So you see this wave is not a crisp shadow here. It actually turns a little bit at that corner. And then if the opening is less than or equal to the wavelength, so we're saying small openings, then you get this maximum curving. So someone, like if this is water, in an inner tube over here, you would think, oh, the wave's just going to go. It's not going to, it curves around and they start bobbing up and down even though they're behind that wall. The wave will bend, it will diffract because the opening is small, okay, compared to the wavelength. You can have another uh, situation where instead of having an opening, you have a barrier. Again, you have a barrier that's much greater than the wavelength and you have uh, no bending behind that barrier. The wave just gets cut off cleanly. This is again uh, an example's light which has a very small wavelength and you put your hand and then you make shadow puppets. You know you make a butterfly or something. You've done that probably as a little kid. Again because light has such a small wavelength compared to your hand. It doesn't bend so it makes nice crisp shadows in here where the bend, light doesn't bend in behind your hand. If the barrier is just greater than the wavelength, not much, much greater. So again, I could either increase the wavelength or decrease the barrier or do both. Then there's some amount of curving and there's only a small region of dead zone where the wave doesn't get in, but eventually it curves in and over here the waves have closed the gap so the barrier doesn't protect someone over here. The waves will eventually curve around and there'll be wave fronts going this way. They curve around the barrier. The third situation is if the barrier is much, much, or sorry, less than or equal to the wavelength, then it pretty much the waves curve in and fill in the gap completely. So it's like the barrier isn't even there, okay? Again, the bending, the diffraction, depends on the comparison of the wavelength to the obstacles. Okay, so we go back to the person, the doorway uh, example that I gave in people A, B, and C. So... If you look at the width of the door, a three foot width door is about point, which is standard, three feet, is about 0.92 meters. That's the width of the door. If you take the wavelength of the light coming off my red shirt, it's this, 7.5 times 10 to minus 7 meters. And how did I figure that out? From V equals lambda times frequency, the wavelength, if I divide the frequency to the other side, is V over frequency. So I just divide the speed of light off the front cover of the reference table. I mentioned that yesterday. And then the frequency of red light, I could also find that on the reference table, right? Red light is somewhere in between here. So I pick four times 10 to the 14th right in between, that's red light. So that I get that. And again, the speed is front cover, speed of light in a vacuum, right? So there. And then I divide and I get that. For sound, when I'm talking, let's suppose I'm talking with 100 hertz, hertz sound. So I could calculate the wavelength the same way. But here, this is something that I just want to mention. Now is a good time. A lot of times students will just use these velocities interchangeably. I'll say a sound has a frequency of 100 hertz, what's the wavelength? And then they put in 3 times 10 to the 8th for speed. No, that's the speed of light. Sound is 331 at STP in this room, which is warmer. Maybe it's like 340, so I just made up 340. And I got a proxy 3.4 meters. So again, with light, they might use 331 here for the speed. No, no, that's sound at STP, not for light. So don't mix the velocities up. Use sounds for sound and lights for light. So, you look at that doorway. The red light coming off my shirt is less than a millionth of a meter wavelength. I mean, I can't even hold my fingers that close together. I could go like that, I suppose. So, tiny, tiny waves coming to this door. To the tiny wavelength of light, the door is huge. So, it's like... I'm going to try and do this without making you too dizzy. It's like this, a huge door, tiny wavelength. So when the light comes through, it does not bend and get to the person in the back of the room here, right? So that's that. But to the sound, which is huge, it's 3.4 meters compared to a 0.92 door. The door is pretty small. 
it's smaller than the sound wave. So that causes maximum refraction. It's like this scenario, right? So we got a small door and a relatively large wave and you get bending. So when you're in the back of the room, the sound from me comes and rounds that corner and gets to your ear. So that is why, so the sound from person A curves to person C, but the light does not, right? So here's that original diagram. Sound can curve because the sound waves are so long and they're hitting in that doorway. The light waves are so short that they don't curve through that same opening, okay? Light can diffract, as I mentioned. The way sometimes it's done in experiments is they will take a piece of glass and paint it black with maybe spray paint and then take a razor blade, so we know how sharp a razor blade is, and cut that paint. So imagine how tiny that slit is, how narrow that is. When light hits that tiny slit, that opening is small enough so the light will spread out and diffract when it hits that tiny slit. Again, because the wavelength is comparable to the opening. So that's diffraction. Once again, I want to mention, watch that video of the, uh, the man giving a demonstration on water waves diffracting in a water tank. And that's diffraction lesson. I will see you in the next lesson.